Hey guys, welcome to the 20th episode of the Learning Podcast. And if you're unsure, it's a Singaporean podcast dedicated to learning something new from every single guest on this show. And today I have a friend that I reached out on LinkedIn. Her name is Lauren. Lauren, Hi. thanks so much for making the way all the way to the east of Singapore next to Changi Prison. <laughs> no problem. It's, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. The reason why I actually reached out to Lauren is because uh, Lauren's specialization is in human resource. Yeah. And from my perspective as a young graduate, right, human resource, to be honest, wasn't a very sexy thing. Mm -hmm. But now that I've started working in industry, right, to me, or at least I'm brainwashed by the Vayner media culture in general, whereby it's very human centric, all those kind of stuff. Right. Human resource is a very wide spectrum like it's a very broad term right mm. and to university graduates it's not sexy but i think that going back to in it being more practical in a working world sure. i think it's extremely important like mm. i've been in companies where, where i felt that i wasn't too taken care of mm. not that i think perhaps it's the responsibility for hr to take care of the employees i think sure. that's just one small subset but i think lauren here because she consults and uh her clients are in the SME industry yep. whereby you build the bedrock of HR practices, culture. I'm not mm. exactly, honestly sure exactly what you do, but I think that having this conversation of learning from you would be interesting because HR, it's not sexy, but it's essential. And I think that for anyone out there listening, whether if you are aspiring entrepreneur or whether if you're starting your own business or whether if you're an existing person who owns a business, right? Perhaps there's a thing or two that you can learn from Lauren who has been in this industry for quite a while. Yep. So that's the first reason. <laughs> the second reason actually why, I, the second theme or question I would like to ask Lauren is her journey in terms of being a solopreneur. Sure. So right now she's at a stage whereby she's working for herself with a couple of smaller things, but things are not too big as well. So mm. I think like when you want to have a big business, mm. it's very different from being a solopreneur. Sure. So um, I just like to ask how your experience has been like being a solopreneur or if there, is there a reason why you chose like, Solopreneur or entrepreneurship, mm. whereby it's bigger in scale. But mm. of course, I'll, I'll, I'll like to have this very interesting well. topics. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that we can talk about, but sure. it will be mainly related to these two. Um, yeah, Lauren, for those listeners that don't know who you are, could you mm. give a quick introduction? Of what you do. Sure. So hi everybody. I'm Lauren Ong, uh, from Singapore, born bred Singaporean. Um, what I do is I do a few different things. I used to be in the HR corporate world from the bank. Uh, from there after, well, we'll talk about the story later. But a bit more about what I do right now. I actually run an online Joss paper store, GotKimTua.com. Yes, that's <laughs> like interesting. It's like a, like a different contrast. Uh, that's a, that's something that is totally like off the charts and yeah, like yeah. different. So I I run that together with a business partner. I run my own HR consulting firm transform recreate so that one i actually do consulting for smes mm. um so i do things like uh, system implementations for them i look at processes okay. i also uh, do some form of referral basis like you know there are sometimes that ex colleagues who let me know that there are some sp small consulting gigs hit hunting uh, no 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 like consulting gigs uh, okay. so I, I did consulting for one of the canadian banks in singapore as well so mm. it was on like a like a friendship you know mm. recommendation basis so that was how like business starting started to grow a little bit from mm. there yeah, uh, and what I do is also hit hunting a little bit. Um, I'm actually more like inactive on hit hunting now, so yeah, because the market is not I very good. I don't know what a does, so I think like I like to ask you. I'll tell you later. That. And uh, what else do I do? Yeah, I think pretty much just what I juggle with now. Mm. Um, bit more busy now because I'm actually based in house in a client's office uh, mm. to actually help him manage certain things. Mm. Mm. First question: <laughs> What is HR? Okay. Um. He tries is actually human resources, yes. right? So uh, basically how resourceful you are is actually how successful you'll be. Yes. It's not about the resources, it's how resourceful you are. Okay, uh, I never studied HR, so <laughs> if you ask me what is the difference of like theory versus practical, I won't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually did psychology in, in uni. Okay. Uh, going to HR was not something I wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just like a twist of fate and then I got into it. Mm -hmm. So I was lucky to get into it. Um, what exactly is HR? It's, it, it's, from, it's an entire whole spectrum of things from you, uh, even before you entering into the company, meaning from you uh, gaining some form of interest in the company. So mm. it's, it's you know, the, the stage where we, we call it recruitment marketing right now. So okay. it's like, you know, how are you attracted to this company? How much, uh, how exactly do you keep coming back to apply for this same company? Okay. Yeah, so how, how, how interested and engaged? The marketing of potential employees to correct, join Correct, correct. So the opportunity of the marketing. So that one. I didn't know that was part yeah, of yeah, so, job. <laughs> So okay. it's it's uh it's not entirely fully into that, but okay. it actually leads to talent acquisition. Mm. So talent acquisition is of course what everybody knows. Okay, um, application, you know, um, 
interviews and all these things and yes. then they'll flow into onboarding yes. so that's where you actually become a employee mm. okay employee and of course what happens you need to have leave you need to have like salary payroll bonus welfare nah, 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 benefits insurance la 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 yeah. la so all these things will come into your entire employee life cycle mm. and then you know how uh how, how do you how do you get remunerated like um is that kpi how is the kpi being determined mm. is tied to company goals so who writes the company goals what what happens how is it being cascaded mm. yeah then then comes training so training is also part of hr so what exactly are you um what exactly are you lacking in your job so yes. uh, is there a training need analysis mm. is there a need for you to go for more courses do you need to change your job role do you need to uh, have a discussion with the whole entire team to look at what the entire team is doing right now is the job scope still relevant okay. yeah so that all falls under training and development and thereafter if you leave the company then of course there's offboarding which goes back to uh, uh, shed, shed, uh, HR shared services. Yeah. Mm. Okay. It's, a, it's, a lot. it's a it's a very big spectrum. So usually if we talk about HR, we'll probably park them into like five major key points. Mm. So there will be recruitment, there will be shared services, mm. there will be compensation and benefits, yes. training and development. Mm. So overarching theme of them will be business partners. So business partners will work with the business units to take care of all these small little things. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you specialize in any of those? No, I didn't. About, no, I um, didn't. But right now for your clients, do you do the whole spectrum? I of still work? do. I still do. Mm. So I'm pretty open. Okay, so so the thing about the story is that I'm lucky. Mm. I actually, when I was in the bank, uh, I met a very, very nice boss who actually gave me a lot of opportunities. Mm. So she was the head of HR. Mm. Then I was only just 24, 25 years old. Mm, so this, uh, no, 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 that was my, Second, that was my third job. Third job already, okay. That was my third job. Mm. Yeah, so uh, she actually asked me to become 50% of her personal, uh, uh, what was that called? PA? Yeah, uh, personal yeah, PA, assistant. yeah, personal assistant. And then the other fifty percent was to do everything else in the department. Wow, shit, that's a lot. Oh, that's a lot. That's wow. very shit. I was very tiring. So during your time at the is, do, which bank is it? Uh, SMBC, Sumitomo Mitsui. How how is it like working there? Like? Uh, actually, I like it because the structure is very. Mm. Uh, there are a lot of structures that are being put in place already so mm. you just have to run and you follow SOPs and mm. you follow so I'm actually a very structured person mm. so from your experience in a bank you are, you had an in-depth understanding into all these several categories right then is there a, so do you try to imp- implement all these kind of uh, pillars of HR into mm. like SMEs or like how okay. do you go about what what do you do with SMEs like they come to you and <laughs> say that uh, I need some I need help, help right? right? Yeah. yeah, I, yeah what, what do you do? So first of all, I need to sit down with them. I need okay. to talk to the boss, okay. who usually is the main decision maker. Yeah. If there is a HR already, the HR needs to be involved because mm. I don't like to change things that people are involved in. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't like it, right? Yes. If like one day somebody came in and changed your job school and yeah. you didn't know anything about it. Yeah. So I would usually engage these two major stakeholders first. I need to talk to them and understand what exactly they want. Mm. Because usually sometimes what the boss wants is not what the HR is capable of doing. Okay. So we need to align that. We need to make them both aware of what's capability versus what is expectation. Mm. And then we will see what we can do from there. Because mm. out of all these things that I spoke about, those five major spectrums, like, you know, um, specializations we call of mm. HR, not everything is applicable in SME. Mm. Basically in SME, it's probably um, up to, typically uh, up to about 100 headcount. Mm. Uh, and then, you know, then you have different departments doing different things. Mm. Um, not everybody can have a full system, like a bank that has, mm. you know, a thousand over employees and yes. like structures of sorts. So they really need to pick and choose and see what they can do and what they cannot do. Mm. So that's where I come in to have a chat with them, understand what they want. And if it's something that I can help them with, I'll be happy to do it for them. Mm. Where, where are the starting points? <laughs> yeah, where, where is the starting point? Like what kind of leading questions will you first ask for, let's say, aligning the HR, com- uh, HR department and the boss? Like sure. Uh, so it really depends on what exactly is happening right now. Was there an issue? Hence, this conversation was needed. Mm. So if there was, then what was what was it? We oh. have to discuss about that. What is currently that is happening? For example, if they have very high attrition rates, mm. so which means that a lot of people like tendering and you know, not staying, not past one year. Okay. What, what exactly? Why? Mm. Is it because there's somebody toxic in the team? Mm. Because if you have, let's say you have 15 employees, can you imagine if five goes away every year? Yeah, that's very painful. In that's 33%. Cash. Yeah. yeah that, and then your replacement and the time that your HR takes to 
uh, hire and replace. Yeah. There's a lot of, you know, like there's a lot of cycle that they have to go through because you know every employee, the onboarding and offboarding, it has to be systematic because uh, HR and accounting are two major functions that are most susceptible to uh, auditing. Oh. <laughs> so you need to keep things right, right? And yeah. of course, it, it 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 um how do I say it? It actually affects people's livelihoods. Yes. So it's money related. It's highly sensitive. Yes. So it's. It's if there is anything that you need to pay most attention to as an SME or at even any company, it's money. Mm. So and and human, right? If mm. you, without these two things, you can't make a company work at all. Yes. Yeah. So these are the two major things that you need to take take care of. So mm. I usually target these two questions and ask. But because my specialization is in HR in terms mm. of consulting, so I usually talk to them to find out what what exactly is lacking, mm. and then we'll steer from there. From your experience, what is most commonly lacking in your clients? <laughs> Like macro of so many clients um, about you, what is the I think uh, um it's about how how well equipped the, the managers are. How so? Right? Yeah, it's it's um actually in, in terms of like uh HR implementation, everybody can do it. Okay. It's it's very straightforward. Yeah. Like if there was a system, just implement it. If it was a SOP, just do it. Yeah. But a lot of people don't know how to be managers. Yeah. So like uh, there will be things like micromanaging, there will be things like stepping on the people's toes okay. and all things. It it really is from the fact that managers don't know how to be managers. They don't mm. know how to manage somebody else mm. because they have all along been an employee. Yes. They have been managed by somebody else. Suddenly they got this promotion. Suddenly they need to assume the role of a manager, but yes. without proper training, they are just somebody who bosses on someone else. Ah, but not okay. but not a manager per se like yeah. a performance manager like how do you exactly make sure that somebody who's reporting to you is learning something in that journey mm. so that's something we need to be very careful mm. of I, I'm not perfect in that so I'm also still learning yes, but yes. but it's it's really the journey of how you see actually a lot of people they quit because of their bosses yes not the big boss but the one directly managing them. them yeah so so that's actually a very big issue so when it comes to let's say teaching managers how to be managers right? Like is it like a workshop thing? Like because uh, these yeah. kind of things to me, it's like very I would say very difficult mm. to let's say like change them in like one workshop. But not possible. It's like a gradual process. What what is this gradual process okay. that you engage? So uh, with them? I, I don't do it personally, okay. I don't do it. Uh, but I've got friends who run consultancy firms who specialize in training managers. Okay. So what they do is they they will come in uh, with a workshop. Let's say they have a class of 20 new managers, newly promoted, for example, okay. and then they'll conduct a class. Mm. The class will go on for probably a one-day workshop and mm. on a week, uh, but maybe one, one week later, they'll do another one. Mm. They will have probably one-to-one coaching sessions with them for the next one month mm. to you know see how they're managing as a new manager. Mm. And then in the end, they will close off the entire thing. So it's like a two-month prolonged training, but you know on a small bite-sized basis just to check in after that. Because you're right, it's something that you cannot learn overnight. Mm. Yeah, it's not like coding, like you know, it's a hard skill, you learn and then you can apply. No. Yeah. It's it's very soft skill, it's very art because yeah. it's human. Yeah. yeah. Aside from let's say outsourcing this training to your consulting friends, right? What other kind of things do you outsource? And because I'm trying to get like a clear picture of exactly what you do. What you do is really aligning uh, let's say the needs of the company, meeting the clients themselves, being very client client front facing. Like what other things do you outsource? In your in, in your in your business. Okay, so that's uh well um I don't do exactly a lot of clients, oh, so okay. I'm very picky with them. Oh. Yeah. Also, so okay. when when a client comes, if it's something that I feel that it's out of scope and something that me as a solo pruner cannot handle, mm. I will reject them. Okay. So usually they'll find somebody else. Usually mm. the cases that come in are those that I can handle and those that I feel like. Um, it's 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 not too big because I cannot handle, for example, five times one hundred employee yes. SMEs. I, I and I don't want to do that because I'll die. <laughs> so yeah. so I'm very picky with my clients. Mm. Usually, uh, my ideal clients are those that are under twenty headcount. Yes. So it's easier and because usually for sizes that are under twenty, the boss has the major say and yes. they want they they are very clear of what they want. So mm. it's actually a lot of working with the the business owner to see what exactly they want. Mm. So a lot of coaching with the business owner also asking them, mm. you know, checking with them what exactly they want they tell me their business goal I'll tell them how HR can align with that how long is the time duration do you work with a client because right now I remember mm. we were sending some messages you are based in a client right yeah like is there a duration or is it, is, is it something like long term because like, sometimes I, I see people like mm. freelancers VaynerMedia has freelancers yeah. as well they are attached to the company for like 4 months and mm. then they leave mm. um like what's the what was the duration like okay. so is it like okay by the end of 4 months I will do this 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 this, this and uh, a bank mm. or like how is it like or do you mm. have is it like ranging do you have like a one year freelance mm. or is there like a permanent 
freelance thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it depends on what they need. So for example, one of my friends who, who set up her own business, so mm. that was less than five headcount. So what I did was um, a proposal to set up things properly okay. and make sure it runs properly so that she can take over becoming the HR manager. So I will no longer be needed after six months, for example. Oh, so okay. I, I drew up something for her because she wants to be the one who manages her business. Mm. I want to be the one who teaches her how to do it. Mm. Because there is, this is not rocket science anyway. Yeah. It's, it's, it's her business. It's just a system in place. Exactly. Yeah. So when, when, um, when she needs anything now, she just comes back to me and say, hey, I've got this question, you know, can you help me with it? Mm. Usually I don't charge. I mean, oh. it's just a question or two, you know, oh. I'm, I'm fine with it. So uh, what, I do with, what I did with her is actually I did a six months contract with her. So okay. I told her there are certain milestones they are going to meet. We'll implement certain systems. We'll implement certain processes mm. this is what will happen mm. uh, and you know you pay me once this milestone is being hit it's just like project management oh, okay. mm. so and then but I'm the one who's drawing out all the milestones that will be hit mm. and then once it's done we're done but of course the relationship is still there because in the end if they use a system for example because I'm also a reseller for payroll systems so mm. if she's a re- reseller for payroll as in you are recommending a payroll system yeah, yeah, for them so, to adapt yeah, exactly so those that um, you know with, with less than 50 hit count you can actually um, don't have to worry so much about calculation because actually there's a lot of things to do with payroll calculations and it's, it's okay, a headache give, give me a 101 like what, 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 what kind of headaches so like um, OT has different calculation okay and like if your salary is a above and below a certain amount OT calculation is different okay every month your ba- so called daily salary is actually mm. different based on working days mm. so all these things and then if you have no pay leave you got to deduct from the previous month or do you deduct from current month mm. and all these things it, it, it has to have a system if not the, the business owner will die calculating yeah. yeah so you make all these policies very airtight is it like yeah so if, very mm. black and white if correct, this happens correct. this happens correct, correct. Happen, okay. so a lot of times it involves setting up a stuff handbook or like a, a HR handbook for the company mm. so everybody sees all like for example I'm a manager I have 15 days of leave mm. like I'm an executive I have 10 days of leave it's mm. very clear cut everybody knows mm. so that there's no politics uh. like oh yeah, how come you got 5 more days than me you know that kind of thing yeah. and because in small companies that's very prone to happening and the managers be like ah, you take one day off lah, never mind or those kind of things ah. it shouldn't be it shouldn't be happening I mean of course if, if that's coming from the big boss fine I mean this big boss company right mm. but like usually the smaller managers will try to manage certain things and mm. that's where all the unhappiness starts from right the, yeah. the, the most bottom layer yeah mm. can you tell me of a story right that is like the most how to say memorable okay I'm not sure because if you're allowed to divulge uh, information about your clients uh, a story that strikes out to you that wow this com- this business really needs help in the HR because it's in like total mess and everything like the oh yeah, just can you tell me a story of something that was so bad, but yet it's something that you fixed and it became very okay. Uh, lucky decent. for me, I haven't I haven't bumped into something that was so bad okay. yet. Yeah, okay, most well, of the okay. time. What's that? What is bad HR? What is bad HR? Okay, I feel that bad HR is zero documentation, zero process. Okay. <laughs> That is bad. That, okay, that's that a that is that is bad enough. Okay, uh, that is bad enough. Okay. So uh, I haven't really seen one that's gone beyond that because you have to have some form of documentation when you're hiring somebody, right? You at least got to have their photocopy of the IC. You have to have to them yeah. sign an application form. Have some form of like their certs. You know, yes. just just as a, a P file. You know, we call it personal file, right? Mm. To just keep it together. So I think a company that doesn't have documentation. It's it's y- good luck. <laughs> okay, okay. So that is number one. Yeah, I feel that it's it's it's. I mean, it's painful not even for the consulting who's coming in. It's painful for people who are working there as well. Yeah. Which means that they don't even bother to have proper setups for documentations, mm. which which you need to think about whether it's a company to stay with. Mm. I feel yeah. Okay, because personally, I I have worked in like companies with no documentation mm. as well, and, and it gives me it, it's made me confused. Feels dodgy, right? It, it feels dodgy, but I'm getting my salary on time and everything. Yeah. But the thing, like small things, like like, do I have off days? Mm. What am I working hours? I, I don't. You know, don't know. La. Yeah, so that that's a little. But you haven't had such experiences, is it? No, I'm I'm very picky. Yeah. I'm I'm very picky with the clients actually. So, um. Lucky for me, they, they haven't come to me yet. So how do you pick clients? Okay, so actually my business model is purely on referral. I don't really do advertisements. I don't really like go out and tell people I'm a consultancy firm. I do this, that. Mm. I don't. I just go out. I mean, as usual, I go out for networking sessions. I meet people. I'll share with them what they do. If they need my help, they'll come to me. And most of the time, that process itself filters out a lot of all these dodgy companies already. Yeah. Would you say in your opinion, you don't have any nightmare clients? No. 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 Wow. No. 
at any one time, right? How many clients would you need to be self-sustaining, in your opinion? Mm. Like being a being in a being a consultant, mm. essentially. Yeah. Okay, I think consultant is is a is a glamorous name. Uh, yeah, it seems to me like you're, yeah, you are a consultant, right? No, no, I hate to use that word. Okay, I hate, hate to use that word. But um, the reason why it's being called consultant is because it's consultancy. I, okay. I usually don't like to tell people I'm a consultant because yeah. I feel like consultants are very crappy. They, they, you know, sometimes talk a lot. Where did you get that? Uh... Uh, I've worked with some in my past corporate life, so I, you know, not naming anything, but I just feel like it's, 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 I, I rather use it as a problem solver. So I go into the company to help you solve HR problems, and once I'm done with it, I'm I'm gone. Mm. Yeah, so I, I like to use that term more. So can you share <laughs> it's like a, a corporate title. <laughs> but can you share a little bit more? Like, why do you think like why do you have that negative? Like, is it through your corporate experience yeah, working yeah, yeah, with yeah, consultants yeah. that is it at the end of the day they don't solve your problem or they charge too much or like? Okay, what? I think the charging thing it's 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 not the same conversation because it's value driven. Yes. Yeah, and of course it's it's depend. I mean, you know how consultants work, right? They Actually, I don't know. Honestly, okay, I don't. so so consultants right will charge you based on how well they think you can pay. That's oh, one of the okay. ways that if they I charge. Value based pricing. Yeah, yeah. value based if pricing. If I'm a banker, they'll charge me a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, no one they won't charge exactly you. exactly okay. so for me I'm not going down that road I'm not going down the price wall as well so usually when they come to me I'll tell them this is the price if you mm. want to do it then do it if you don't go and find somebody else so you, you think. don't do it based on value based pricing uh, no I actually am quite I'm quite flat with okay. pricing so, so it's I'm just a flat, flat quite, fee quite typical I mean I do some form of adjustments if uh. they don't want certain things I just plus and minus here and there but, but why not uh, is, isn't it, doesn't it seem like lucrative to you in it is sense? lucrative but yeah. is it worth my time uh, if if a company is is able to pay, but I know that they have got a lot of shit stories that I have to clear, then I'm not interested in working with them. Because first of all, if they gotten to that stage where there's a lot of shit, mm. uh, internal processes must be horrible, and the people to work with are not very pleasant, mm. Yeah, so that's that's one of my filtering processes as well. Mm. Uh. Aside from managers, how often do you think that the problem lies with uh, is it bosses? Care to share a bit? more like explain a little about the question because you are very picky with clients mm. right okay, okay i'm not picky la. i'm okay. just a bit more particular with who i work with the, okay i think in the end the most important thing is i need to feel that these people are genuine and sincere people mm. there are just some people who want to get a consultant in and you know use the consultant's name to get away with certain things and that's what not like what, blame it on a consultant yeah that's not what i'm for i'm mm. i'm actually in those clients that i've actually served are those who I either know them personally or I actually were being recommended to them by somebody else I know. And trust. And trust. So, mm. and I know that the business is legit. They've been doing well for a while. I'll do a lot of research on the company before I actually go and have a chat with them, mm. pitch them what I can do for them. Other mm. than that, I'm actually really like, oh, don't come to me. Oh, okay. So that's what I mean by picky because I prefer to work with people. I mean, I think as a solopreneur, right, you need to be very particular with the kind of time you spend with the clients. There are some clients who can pay you very well, but they give you a lot of headache. And is you it call worth it? Weekends, is it like uh, yeah, it's not about the weekends. It's about like small little things that you ask them to do it. Because okay, um, I think just to set the tone straight, consultants don't do everything. We need people inside the company to be available and capable. Then we can complement to buy into the idea. Correct, correct. So it's not like you get a consultant in. Consultant does everything for you. No. Oh. Yeah, you need to have people. For example, like the ex-bank that I was with, um, we wanted to do a digitization of like the systems. So we got a consultant to come in and implement that, train us, and make sure that we are capable and well of running. Then they go off. Yes. So that's what a consultant does. Okay. Yeah. So I think in that light, it makes you understand a bit better. So yes. that's what I do. I need to make sure that internally they have people to be able and capable of running whatever I want to implement mm. that is in line with the boss's idea. Then I will do it. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So it's not like they they trust your expertise, but you you don't do the actual grant work. Like. I I do. I oh. I had them to set up everything. Set up. I yeah, set up and then make I discuss with them. Correct, and make it make it easy for them. Mm. Basically, there is a reason why they've been doing things wrong or doing things difficult the whole time because mm. they they don't know what is the better way, right? Mm. So what I do is I come in and I suggest a better way for them. Mm. Now this is how we can do this. Do you think this is good? If it's good, let's implement this, and then mm. you know it will become their SOP. And no, once they're self running, and then I will go away. Mm. 
that that's how they improve and become better. So so after I leave and at a certain stage, let's say they are they are twenty head count and then when they grow to eighty head count, mm. that set of SOP cannot work anymore. Because okay. it cannot handle that kind of headcount anymore, yes. so mm, so they need to review and look at it, and how how can the business actually change to accommodate that growth? Because yes. eventually nobody wants to get stuck at eighty headcount, right? Yes. If you want to grow as a business, you need to go bigger, faster, and the more you change, the more you need to change processes underlying, right? Mm. So that's where the, the the consultant actually comes in, gives you advice based on what they've seen, what market actually does, and then you know you make changes that is that is to the company itself. Yes. Of course, market practices everybody wants to know, right? But mm. in the end, it's just market practice. This. Mm. You can be special. For example, there's a certain company that a client I used to have. She has got uh, seven days of birthday leave. Okay. Why? Because birthday leave. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so because um, she herself Why, likes yeah. to she herself likes to celebrate her own birthday with many friends, and she wants to take a break on her birthday. Mm. So she she thought you know I I've got employees. I'll just implement the same thing for them. Mm. It's something nice, lah. Yeah, lah. So, so it's it's not like HR is you know strictly or oh, we have to follow MOM standards. We have to do this. Yes, you can follow MOM standards. That's the minimum you have to follow. But mm. you can do a little bit more if you feel a bit more human with in certain aspects. Like for mm. her birthday leave, mm. for some of them they they are like, okay, I don't want to give flexi cash. I do. Uh, I I I I pile the entire insurance that they need to do, mm. and other than that, you know, I maybe give them two hundred dollars per per month. Uh, mm. sorry, per year to do something on their own, mm. and they just claim back from me. Mm. Or another one, another client that I, I used to serve. Uh, she <laughs> she has her own uh, jewelry jewel jewelry line. Oh yes. my god! <laughs> yeah. So what she does is uh, she actually creates like uh masterpieces for mm. clients, custom pieces. Mm. So she tells her her uh, employees like, oh, per month you get eighty dollar credit. You go and change forever ring, whatever earring you want. Go, go and do it. Wow, that's so nice. Yeah, so, you know, benefits come in different sizes and shapes, and yes. it's not just what we see in corporate world. Mm. SME actually has a lot of things to play with. Yeah, from your experience, right, when it comes to being generous with all mm. these like little benefits, right, um, would you say that is there a difference between how Singaporean companies give give such benefits versus uh, perhaps international clients that you have? Mm. Mm. Is there a difference, or no, there's no difference? I guess or is that it based on the individual <laughs> at the end of the day. I think it's still based on individual, but of course there I is a that cost, la. Singaporeans, I don't know. I always have this calculating, like, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that this thought that Singaporeans <laughs> quite young. <laughs> la. That's just my. That's not wrong. Yeah, that is my perception, la, But mm. from my experience, mm. is there a big difference when it comes to all these kind of little HR mm. Uh, mm. welfare or practices? From what I've seen, they they actually like to have a variety. For SMEs that are, for example, like that jewelry line, mm. uh, she wants to do things a little bit more different. So mm. she 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 told me one day she was like, you know, um, I want it to be a bit more special, and then like this this employee would regret leaving me. Oh, <laughs> like this exact phrase, uh? Something like that, okay. Like you know, I want them to feel the pinch if they leave me because. The benefit is good, you yeah. know, in that sense. So it's part of her employee retention plan, uh. Uh, that maybe she wants to do certain certain things. Uh. Uh, so I think it's really dependent. But of course, it, it depends on the budget that they have. I mean, yes. international companies, uh, you know, we all do budgeting on a yearly basis. Mm. So we have got a budget for certain things. And um, when I was back in the team in the X Bank, it's it's not easy to implement a new reward for mm. employees. At a, such a large uh, yeah, because there was about I think about nine hundred local employees, wow, and then there were about six hundred. I think was it six hundred or about five hundred? So or I think I think at the point of time the headcount was about one point two, one point three. I can't remember, but mm. more than one k. So it was very difficult to implement something because you can't take it lightly. Yes, everybody was like calling your your direct line, and then yes, they yes. would just buzz your phone line because uh. they keep calling you and asking you about different things. Mm. So there was just this small little thing that I did for my boss at that point of time. Um, we were we were looking at corporate plans, so uh, phone plans. That point in time, there were only three major competitors in the market, so I looked for them and I said, like, look, I've got, I've got a, a company of like one point something k headcount. Mm. So, what's the what's the plan that you can give it to me in terms of the corporate plan for yes. all these employees? Mm. So they came back and gave us a few quotes. So we picked and chose. I mean, we took from all three, mm. and then we, we just collated it in a in an email, and then we did a blast to the entire bank. But mm. well, the moment the email was sent out, my phone started ringing nonstop. Man, everybody oh. start asking me, hey, what's this? What's this? What's this? So 
so a lot of education has to go into um, even implementing benefits. Mm. Yeah, people are very concerned about new benefits. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, so I was on the other side. because So I'm very careful when I'm doing like SME benefits implementation or so. Mm. I will always ask them, first of all, can you handle it? Because mm. the stress is going to come in. For example, like her $80 per employee per month. Mm. And then you, you, you do a multiplication and then you get the annual budget per year. Do you have the excess per year to be able to supplement that? If you ask me if Singaporean companies are a bit more now, um, I think it's very boss dependent. The boss dependent. <laughs> I think it's very boss dependent. Mm. Yeah, those that I work with are pretty okay. I mean, in the end, it's a it's a it's a it's a plus and minus thing. Some things they do a bit more. Some things they cut back a little. So, mm. uh, the more important thing is how well are you educating your employees on it. Mm. Like the reason why you're doing it. Mm. Like some of them go and compare. Hey, my friend in the other firm, XX firm got how many days of leave? Mm. Why we only got XX days? You know. Mm. So these things you cannot compare because maybe the nature is different. You are working a six day week. They are working a five day week mm. so you've got more they've got less or they've the different got more. industry as well la. exactly so it's not like it's it's uh you know like you sweep it off just like that you mm. know one shot it's not possible mm. uh, we previously talked about how hr like you said my conception of hr are like <laughs> they, tell they me about it honest, tell, honest, right? i like to listen uh, what, what do out. hr people do right like but for yourself you just you just told me that like for yourself you worked very very long i was creating mm. a lot of spreadsheets everything right mm. like uh What's the misconceptions about HR? Like my, the one misconception I think is like HR people didn't do anything, right? But I don't think that is true. Okay, what? so for all the HR people out there who's been getting all this, your HR, uh, you know a lot of people will say this thing to HR people and like, HR need to work so long hours, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's well, yeah, a ton of things to do. Like um, there's a lot of reporting. There's a lot of making sure documentations are correct, which is why I said, if a company doesn't have proper documentation, even on HR, it's a very big problem. Mm. Because how do you account for the person? For example, in a P file, there must be basic things like their letter. So what's a P file? The personal file. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, sorry. Like, so P file, right? So in the P file, there must be a letter of contract that's between the employee and the company if not okay. what basis is this person working as right okay. and all these things are PNC so all these files are kept under lock and key to what I worked in last time in mm. all the firms that I were with mm. I was with and um, although there's a lot of digitization of all these files but in the end mm. it's very important uh, confidential stuff mm. so you've got to keep it and then the room and then HR people usually sit in a room because why all the things that they handle are very confidential yes. you wouldn't want some your ex or your, your teammate to be walking past HR and seeing your bonus number Yeah. how would you like it right yeah. <laughs> so yeah so things like that and you know uh, for example peak periods for bonus generation and for what I did was a regional role so bonus generation generation was different for every country that I handled so mm. I was doing the APEC region mm. so for a whole good two three months I was busy with bonus oh looking at everyone bonuses is correct it? so okay. you're the one make so sure you must go to the right person la. go to the first thing first thing the trigger must be right so did, did that form go to the correct manager and did, is the manager a performance manager or is the person the compensation manager Wait, what? What, what <laughs> performance? What, what so, it? so managers, right? Manager is a very loose term. Yes. So manager can can look after your performance, but not ne- not necessarily dictate your compensation. Oh, okay. So okay. when when it comes to a bonus period, so that form must go to a compensation manager. Oh, there's a difference. There's a difference. I didn't even know there's a difference. So yeah, yeah. So there's a difference. Like you must make sure that the the correct manager receives the correct form. Oh, okay, uh, and okay. and in a in an international setup, right? There are some some managers who are based abroad. So, for example, there was this special team that I was handling in Singapore. Mm. Their bosses were all over the world. One was in Japan, another was in Hong Kong, another was somewhere else. I can't remember. Yeah. So, you got to make sure that they receive the form. Mm. If they can't receive the form on the e system that we had, they need to print out the spreadsheet, mm. stamp it, and then send it back to us. And then oh. we will key it back in, and then you know do everything else. So there's a lot of things to be done. There's mm. back end because everybody thinks that bonus is just bonus la. Yeah, but at the macro scale, you need, there's so much math going on. Because the, right? even before bonus is being declared, first of all, how did the company perform? Mm. Was there even a budget? Was there even a bonus pool that is enough to be formed up to, to have a bonus fund pool? Yes. Yeah. And and how, how is this bonus fund pool going to be distributed across the entire company, company mm. or setup per se? And what kind of matrix are you giving to everybody? So everybody has a KPI, right? So that's where your, perform, your training and performance comes in. So if you are the top performer, for example, then they say, okay, top performer is this range. Based on your corporate rank, this range, what is the percentage you should be getting? 
thing is it mm. correct mm. Uh, let's say for example if you if you are a top performer in in your corporate rank you can only get up to 20 percent but yes. your compensation manager give you 50 percent mm. because your compensation manager likes you for example yeah but cannot what? So yeah. how? And then how? Those policies are in place. Correct. Yeah. So we are the one monitoring it at the back end, uh. and then we have to see like every day. It's it's like stock market. <laughs> oh. The numbers will come in, and then you've got to keep looking at it every day because uh, bonus period is sensitive. They want they want updates. Yes. And they want to know whether they will bust the budget or not. If they mm. need to request for more from head office or that, that's very dependent. I mean, it doesn't happen all the time. But mm. most of the time, we actually don't use up the entire funding. So just that. You know, there'll be some ad hoc uh, promotions that will happen throughout the year. So it mm. can come from the same fiscal year, uh, sorry, financial year pool. Yes. Why solopreneurship over building and scaling a business to have like multiple employees, a big office, many people? Why? I never envisioned that. Never envisioned never. that? Never. In fact, my, my stepping into business world is purely incident, coincidental, incidental, mm. accidental, mm. whatever. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's just not planned. I, in mm. fact, was a very normal employee. I was just very lucky to have bumped into that boss mm. who gave me a lot of opportunities. But actually, I was very happy with that role because I get to learn a lot of different things. Mm. I was fine. There was a career path that was being... It was very clear for Yeah, me. I mean, everything was plotted out like, in terms of like, okay, maybe another few more years, another promotion, what's happening. It was rather clear cut with her, like the opportunities that she planned out for me was already there. I could see it clearly already. Mm. It's just that, um, well, things in life happen. Mm. So, uh, about four years back, what mm. happened was when I was still with SNBC, mm. I I got promoted. I worked damn hard for it. Okay. I worked pretty damn hard for it. Okay. Um, with that boss, uh, I had to. Okay, first of all, I think bosses they they have a lot of uh, things to settle on hand with senior management. Yes. So, uh, things like meeting CEO it's and like a, because it's like a hamburger, like got someone on top, someone below. Right, right. There was always there will always be somebody on top of you because yeah. it's a corporate setting. So, mm. um, for her, even being a head of HR, she had a lot of issues to handle with. So, at about a time when I was supporting her in the PA stuff, right, I could actually see how she communicated with um the senior management, and that was where I learned a bit about like, hey, you know, uh, oh. yeah, like how to deal with the C suite people because they're not exactly easy to deal with. Okay. You you know what I mean, right? <laughs> I think. <laughs> Yeah, so but the lucky thing is because she's she's really taking care of me very well. So mm. she gave me the opportunity to talk to them, pitch mm. them, and mm. there was once I remember there was this management paper I was supposed to bring to one of the, the directors of the bank. Mm. And then when I was holding that piece of paper, I was trembling yeah, outside yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trembling outside the office and then the secretaries because we have to be on very close time with the secretaries to find out their schedules and all yes. this. So they were like, Hey Lauren, relax ah. Yeah. Ay, yeah, why are you so control? Yeah. I was like, Yeah, I need to get the paper stamp. Oh. <laughs> so that one I mean all these small experiences build up to all these courage to right now um, maybe dare to talk to somebody who maybe it's is a decision senior. maker yeah yeah. yeah. so uh, exactly why I decided to move out was because I worked done hard for a promotion I got promoted um, about four years back when I was still in corporate the same day I got promoted my elder sister passed away Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. How, yeah, how old was uh, she, she was thirty five when she passed on. Mm. So um, that kind of dropped me into a different world entirely because um, the day before she passed away, she was still texting me. She said, "Hey, you're getting a promotion tomorrow. Uh, oh. Let's because uh, my promotion was on a Friday. I think I remember." quite clearly if I'm not wrong Friday yeah. or Saturday can't remember uh. 1st of July I remember uh. it Um, so she texted me the day before she said hey let's have a like a crab feast at your house on Saturday yeah. uh, but there I was Saturday kneeling beside her coffin burning joss paper for her mm. so I really felt that life was something that you know you can't predict and you need yeah. to take each day at you know, as and do it. Day. Yeah, as each day and do your best because mm. you really won't know when's the moment you will stop breathing. For her, she mm. really passed on so suddenly that nobody else actually knew how to react. Mm. So we, my second sister and I, uh, had to break the news to the kids. Had to, you know, after that, the entire family, my entire household, had to change the way we did things. Yeah. Yeah, because um. The, the, the places we live are really far apart. Yeah. I'm in the west and she's her house is in the northeast. Yeah. So even if I speed drive, I eh, don't <laughs> maybe don't post this, but like yeah. even if I drive very quickly, yeah. it takes 40 minutes for me to get to the other house. Yes. So it's very far. And um, at a point of time when she passed on, my nephews and niece, mm. uh, 
they are very young. One was 7, 12, 14. So mm. they were going through this stage of growing up. And mm. my brother-in-law is a businessman, so he's very mm. busy. And mm. most of the time, he is flying around and busy with work. Yes. So the main caretaker of the kids were my sister. Oh, okay. So the family as a whole had to change. And even for me, when I could commit 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. work hours back in the bank, um, it was very difficult for me to go back to work mm. uh, after she passed on. Because... Mm. There were just a lot of things that has to be done in terms of my schedule. So yes. I, I was one of those people who, who would reach on the dot. Like 9 a.m. means 9 a.m. So oh. I'll reach at 9. And then oh. I'll, I'll, if, if I can leave on the dot that day, I'll leave. But if mm. I have to OT, then it's 10 or, 9 or 11 or mm. whatever. Mm. So I'm okay. I'm a kind of person who doesn't mind working, putting in the hours. Yes. But the, my, new, my new life didn't mm. allow me to have that anymore. You had to take on additional responsibilities. Exactly. I had to, I had to rush over to my late sister's house to mm. just look after my, ki- uh, my, my not my kid, my, yeah. my niece's yeah. things, yeah, spelling, yeah, yeah. you know, a parent letter, you know, oh. just to make sure that my brother in law knows that there is this thing happening. Mm. And, you know, the whole family has to work together as a team all over again. Yeah. So that, that really couldn't, couldn't go on. And mm. I decided that, you know, I think it was about half a year later, mm. I decided to quit entirely because mm. I didn't even wait for my bonus. I, I knew my figure already because I was in HR, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I settled my own bonus. La, so like, uh. we get to see our own spreadsheet because no choice of who else got to do my bonus, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I really saw the figure and I was like, I forget it. La. Mm. I, I, so I just tended and I left. So in that sense, this experience, you, this experience, I would say motivated you or is, is this is the reason why so you this was why solo, yeah um, okay so not exactly why but it was the process of moving out that yeah. I decided that you know it's really not a too bad idea to do something for myself because yeah. my sister did, didn't have the chance anymore to do mm. something for herself so mm. why not that now that I can see things clearly mm. that time is definite mm. I can do something different mm. and not just run by the red like. I mean mm. I was I was happy where I was mm. at the bank but it just after a while it just got stagnant because like I mentioned, the path was so clear already mm. that, you know, after a few years, you know, another promotion. And in mm. fact, in fact, they didn't allow for a second promotion. So uh, I had to wait maybe two more years for another promotion. But mm. then I stepped back and think like, is that really what I want? Because I, I'm i I'm losing time with my parents as they're growing old. And yes. at that rate that I was working, 9 yeah. to 11, I was very afraid. Yeah. No, I was very afraid that my mother would lose another daughter. Oh. <laughs> Legit. Because... Uh, at times she would call me at 10 p.m. Before my sister passed, she would call me at 10 p.m. Uh, uh, you're still in office, ah? Uh? Yeah, uh, you're you, still in office, right? I'm still there, lah. Yeah. And then she like, oh, uh, you not coming home yet, ah? Uh? Uh. Oh, not yet. And then like 11, she'll call again. And then on times that are busy, like bonus periods, mm. maybe 12, she'll call. You want uh. me to get your father to send an air mattress to your office? Oh. You know, she will swan me like that. Okay, okay. <laughs> because I was just like not coming home because of work. Mm. And see, she understands, but she also like is worried, lah. So mm. then I decided that you know, since my sister has really gone and I think it's time that I need to take charge of my time mm. and, you know, find something that works for me and now my family commitment. So actually, I, I, I value my family a lot mm. and all these things that I'm doing right now is just so that I have time to be able to, you know, maybe go out for a meal with my mom. Oh. My, sometimes my dad needs to go and see a doctor, you mm. know, we can bring them because when you're in corporate, you can't do that. Yeah, I mean, Vayner is very different probably because it's flexible still and, you know, uh, startup scenes are very different from the normal traditional, uh, even SMEs, not all of them allow this. So that's why I I was thinking like, what exactly can I be doing, you know, so that I don't fall back into this trap all over again. I mean, you talk about contextualizing contextualizing time, right? Mm. Is there any advice you give to a young person like me? Because sometimes I feel like uh, I have still got a lot of time, uh. Yeah. But right, at least from what I'm hearing from you, right, that incident, right, made you realize that there's finite time. But yeah, at the same time, there's still a lot of time. But how is there any advice for you? How to one? how to do it, right? Yeah. Like how to catch that that little little small window. Uh. So I feel it's um I've ever been asked this question like what what exactly do I think about time? Yes. So I think time is definite. So if you have today, use today. So when, you know, when, when it was the most traumatic period of the first six months when my sister passed on, mm. um, I was basically a failure. Nah. <laughs> I, what, what do you mean? I, I, I mean, after I left corporate, uh, I, I just took two months and I just 
just did nothing. Mm. I just woke up, watch TV, go back mm. to sleep, and mm. then there was no purpose, zero. There was nothing two in life. La. Two months, about two months, okay. yeah. And I just decided that I just didn't want to do anything. Mm. I just want to know, yeah. because this some hardcore. Noir. Life is difficult, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I just decided I took a break, and then after that, I recharged, and I felt like okay. So, um, my sister didn't get to leave to the next day. So if I can, I can live to the end of today, mm. before I go to sleep. Would I be happy if I died tomorrow? Mm. Mm. That was a question that I always ask every night, like to sum up my whole day. Yeah. Like if I die tomorrow, will I be oh, happy? It's not so morbid, but yeah, but that's a yeah a way to force yourself to. Control that's something I still it. live by. So there yeah. are days when I'm still lost, and then I need to know. Right, I just know. Then yeah. I say, okay lah. If tomorrow I die today, I know because I need to know today. Then I die lah. Then it's ah. okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think I think this question about like, do you feel like you have enough time, but yet you still have only today? I think you can only make the most out of today. There's only twenty four hours you can do. So, mm. what are you doing about it? Like, if there was a goal that you had, are you working towards? See, if you are then good lah. I mean you mm. will die happy tomorrow But if you're not Then when you die tomorrow mm. Whoever Whoever Whichever um, Figure you see Based on your religion mm. when, when they say that Okay I actually did already Then would you be happy mm. Yeah I think that That is the question that Maybe people need to ask themselves So During these two months right When did you like At what like, like At the end of two months You had this realisation Then you Wanted to make use of the whole Like Make use of the day So how did it how how did it translate to you doing what you do not right oh. now? Like what was the transition period before before that two months and your first client? So that question actually came first. Then I decided I needed to take a break. Oh, okay. okay. Mm, so I, I actually once she passed away, mm. uh I was always thinking about life already, like what exactly? Why am I going to work? Mm. Then I'll sit in the office and I'll cry and then do it my Excel spreadsheets, right? I'll just cry and I'm like, Okay, why am I here? Okay. Yeah, and then when the trigger came that I attended after that, I decided that, okay, I, I'm just going to do something for myself. Mm. Uh, I'm just going to take two months. I take a break. I go for a holiday. I come back. I know I do whatever I need to. Oh. And then two months later, I'll be a... It how long? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I gave, I gave myself a two months uh, to be super tall. Oh. Uh, be <laughs> super <laughs> tall. Like, oh, I just... Um, I don't know. Sorry. Tui, uh, super tui. Tui, yeah. Okay, okay, just okay. like, you know, like just... Almost rot and decompose okay. at home, that kind of feeling. But and then you will. Uh, I gave myself right? a deadline, like oh. a timeline. Okay, like by two months, I finish traveling, I finish watching TV, I finish two like. It's not a very long time. It's not, but actually, anything more than two months, uh, you'll be dead. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you, you cannot find that energy to come back all over again. Oh. Yeah, so I. Then, um, actually, the, the, the idea of like starting gotkinsaw.com was oh. already around. Uh, about two three months after my sister passed away. So when for those listeners out there, could you give a intro- short introduction? Oh sure, Gokinsaw more than happy to. Yeah. So gokinsaw.com is my online business. Yes. Uh, I actually sell just paper online. So mm. we cater to B two C and also B two B. Um, what we do is we actually help them to purchase like uh not not purchase like we have packages that are available already. So mm. they just check out. We get it delivered to them. Mm. Doorstep. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Back to <laughs> so uh, that idea was already around when I was still in corporate. So I was oh. going around talking to my friends, some JC friends, some like you know uni friends, okay. some some colleagues. My colleagues were like the the, the funniest people. Like you sell ah, <laughs> you want to sell just paper online? You sell is it? I, honestly, that would be my <laughs> reaction as well. But I think, but it hasn't been done. The thing it, is, uh, it, it, has, it been. has been done. I'm not the first. I'm not the first. What's that? What's your value prop? Uh, so we, we actually want to be people's favorite. So we don't want to be an online catalog. Mm. We want to provide value. So what we do is we write we write uh, blog posts. Mm. We educate people about how to write certain things. Of course, we're not an expert. Mm. I'm not an expert. Mm. Uh, I have a mini consultant at home who is mm. my mom. Okay. <laughs> so sometimes I don't know how to do certain things, like how to write certain stuff. She'll be like, oh, you do this, 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 this. So she'll, she'll teach me along the way also. Because mm. what my business partner and I both realized is that um, Singapore is big, a very multicultural place, multi-religious, mm. uh, multi-dialect place. Yes. So um, myself being a Hokkien, I, uh, what's your dialect? Cantonese. 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 Yeah. So my business partner is a Cantonese. Mm. So what we did was we got a few friends to come out and talk about the practices that we did. So for Hokkien, there's this thing about Pai Tian Gong. Okay. Uh, I don't know which day of Chinese New Year. Honestly, I'm not quite bad with it because okay. my business, don't we, we don't specialize in that. But anyway, it was just a market research kind of thing. So we got some friends to sit down. Another Hokkien friend, she said, eh, my household does this, this, this on this day. And then we'll do another prayer on another day. Okay. And then we thought it was a Hokkien thing. So mm. the next Hokkien 
second person that we spoke to said, no lah, it's just like that, one day got him. Oh. Ah, and then okay. we tried to speak to another one. So we collected info, we collected, then we realized that it doesn't mean you're Hokkien, it, uh, it doesn't mean that you're Hokkien, it means that you have the same practice. Yes. So there are certain things that have been changed because maybe family have different practices. Mm. Yeah, so it's very hard to align the entire Singapore, sorry, yeah, very yeah. hard to ent- uh, align the entire Singapore, like, you know, dialect groups into like, oh, you are Hokkien, you must do this, 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 because mm. people will comment on your blog and say, hey, no la. Not correct. Uh, yeah, not correct. Yeah. yeah, so we didn't kind of want to go down that, that rabbit hole. So what we did was like more generic stuff. And of course, we try to post things that are educational people, because I think for younger people, even like me, mm. I, I don't know what's the reason for doing certain things. I have no idea. Yeah. So we try to talk to like, um, you know, those Hui Guan people, we try to ask them. Oh, okay. Yeah, we try to document that. Uh, that's in the process for content this year. Yeah. Just just to, I think just to leave things there for people. In the end, I even if you don't buy from me, you'd buy from my competitors, I'm perfectly fine. But, but you're still providing helpful information. Exactly. Like I, I wish that in the end, you come back to my blog post because you want to learn how to fold certain kim zua. I don't uh, mind. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's, it's actually performing quite well. So we are pretty shocked. Mm. There was a blog post that we did many years back um, about how to fold the in god. Okay. Yeah, and then like it gets consistent like views, and you know people actually come back to my site just to look at how to do I it. Think I would imagine that this kind of content will really resonate like among what, high or, like older generations. Uh, they they will they, know how they, to do it. Okay. But they they it's us, for oh, example. Us, yeah, we yeah. don't know how to fall, right? So yeah. where do you go? First thing you do is Google. Oh uh, yes, yes. Uh, and I don't think Google have a lot of information about that, right? Not much. Uh. Okay, okay, sorry. Going back to when you transition mm. into being a solo solopreneur, at what how do you get your first client? Uh so for, for the consultancy, yes. it didn't it didn't come planned actually. I was oh. very happy doing Gogginzo.com stuff. Mm. Uh, I was busy with seven months, busy with delivery. So one fine day one of my friends who is my who was my client, she said, Hey, I've got trouble. I need to set up this thing for HR. You used to do HR, right? I said, oh. Yeah. Then you come and do for me, I give you money. Oh. And that, that's how it started. That's cool. <laughs> Wow, so it's technically your friend who gave you like Incepted you the route, is it? Like, yeah, gave you the idea of yeah, doing yeah. this as a Yeah, I career. never, never thought that like I would do consultancy as oh. like like something that brings in money. It was money. never on your mind. Oh, you need, you need to thank this friend yeah, quite a lot, right? Yeah, so that's why like I, I gave her a very friendship prize as well. I was oh. like, okay, then addi- additional things that she asked for, I'll just usually give it to her. She will recommend some friends to me. Whether they turn out or not, I'm fine because mm. at least she refers, right? So mm. Uh, yeah, that was how the business for the consultancy actually started. I didn't con, I didn't consciously go out and set it up and say that, hi, I'm open for a consulting business. It didn't happen that way. It actually, it was to the point where she was sending me money so much that I was like, okay, I think I need to do something about it. I need to account for this money coming uh, in. Also, because <laughs> I, I believe that it wasn't like a business or sole proprietor. It wasn't. So it was. It, was, it, was, it, was, like, it was just like she transferred the money uh, to me. Then I was like, no, I think I need to make it proper. After, as a HR person, yeah. like, you want to have proper <laughs> the documentation. documentation right? uh, yeah. So I said, okay, never mind. I'll just set up a sole prop and then I'll just uh. do it as, as and when and I'll just take it as it comes. Uh. Uh. And then eventually when the project ended, I've got another project lined up and then, you know, just suddenly things just she, fell like in. She referred Someone, she referred yeah. someone, uh, it didn't, didn't kind of turn out, but it's uh. fine. And another friend, but uh, it's the power connect. of word of mouth, la. yeah, 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 yeah. And I actually believe in word of mouth because eventually you want to work with somebody you trust, mm. yeah, you don't want to work with somebody dodgy or like mm. overly cheap, yeah, because <laughs> you really don't know what the you know what the quality is. Because mm. my experience, in let's say, because my experience is a digital mark, uh, I'm a media analyst, I run ads essentially, mm. right. So are you fully dependent on word of mouth or are, are you tr- like we were previously talking about you running ads as well, right? Mm. Are you comfortable with only relying on word of mouth for now? I guess so. Yeah. I, I'm actually pretty easily contented. So uh. I'm not the kind that, oh, I want to build a business that uh. has like 2,000 employees and like uh. a super big space. Okay. I'm not somebody like that. You can say that I'm not ambitious, but really I think I just value I just value my time more. So I feel like if I can, for example, I'm, I'm awake for, let's say, 16 hours, for mm-hmm. example. So in that 16 hours, how many how many hours are being spent on client work? Mm-hmm. How many hours do I spend on taking care of myself mm-hmm. so that my family can be taken care of? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think about that and mm-hmm. I try not to overwork mm-hmm. because I, I don't believe in, like, you know, taking as many clients as possible and then screwing up all their work. Yes. Yeah, because you want to do a really good job. Correct. The yeah. attention actually matters because when yeah. you are in a company's mode, like you got to switch into that company's mindset. You know, you got to understand like yeah, the yeah. yeah. You know, like for example, if you yeah, for ads, me, I work with several clients as well. Correct. It feels like my head, right? It's split <laughs> into like how many clients <laughs> I'm in charge of. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, I empathize with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Changing gears, right? You do a little bit of hate hunting, right? Mm. Can you introduce me to how do you hate hunt? <laughs> okay, so hate hunting is just more executive term of doing recruitment. Okay. Okay. Sounds very atas and like. Atas, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So, uh, what we do, uh, usually people will try to put a definition to it, but okay, mm. the most commonly used one is like anything that is more than seven k, they use it as a hate hunter for. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. Okay, and, okay. Yeah. So they high value, uh, important like that, like cha-ching. Yeah, okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> So, um, basically, that's what I do uh, uh. on the side. I mean. That's that's not that's one of, not one of the calls. I mean, I just mm. have that cert. So, mm. if any time like my clients need Wait, to search, cert? you need to get certified. And my you God, you need a certification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you get a certificate? Like? So you need to go to like um, you need to take an exam with uh the M-O-M. government. M O M. Uh. Uh, and income I think income is the one that issues and like MOM needs to certify my impression of a headhunter like you network a lot then like you know very talented people mm. then because you meet a lot of businesses yourself right then that's where you connect the dots and you say hey I have someone who will be a good fit for a company so is that what Somewhat. Somewhat. So recruitment comes from the need of a company needing to fill a headcount. Yes. So that's recruitment. So yes. you've got a headcount, you need to recruit. Mm. Okay. So so the, the, the beautiful term sometimes people use is head hunting is probably tied to the remuneration. Lah. And the commissions as well is attractive. Yeah, companies. it's, it's right. different. So like for, for the simple contract job, like placements, the, the commission is a lot lower. Yeah. But for like higher income sector yes. of all these roles that you place, the commission base is different. And of course, mm. depends on what firm you are attached to mm. and you know what's your commission structure. Mm. Mm. So literally, it's called my rent hole la, la. So you, <laughs> Sorry, you translation. <laughs> yeah, you just sell somebody la, oh. to another company, and that's where you get a cut la. So that's how oh. he does earn money la. Is there a reason why you're not uh, a Fully, fan of it? Uh, uh, sometimes I feel it's highly transactional. Okay. Uh, it's overly transactional, like. I prefer to stay with, for example, if you're my candidate today, yeah. and I have a very amazing client that I work with, X company. So client X is is hiring, and for example, if I am looking to just place you in there, I can just place you in there if, of course, you fit their requirements. Yeah. You get into a job there, you stay there for two, three years, oh. you get sick and tired of life, you want to move again. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's usually what happens, right? And then yeah. you probably, if you had a very good experience with your head hunter, you go back to them. You go yes. back to your recruiter because you trust them. Yes. You trust that they will find another good company for you. Yeah. But I feel that it's very transactional. Like, I, I, I just feel like. Okay, I, th- I think I agree. You, yeah. you get what I mean? I feel like. like I'm finding you because I want you to find me a nice job. Yeah. Okay. That's all. Mm. Then we know that oh, it's like a commission scheme and correct, all that kind correct, of stuff. Correct. But but people are open to com like com like com based job yes. uh, of recruitment versus like insurance or property because people need to move jobs. Yes, yes. <laughs> so they are they are very open to you know people when they call and say, Hey, I'm calling from a recruitment firm. Mm. I do have time to speak. Oh sure, the tone mm. is very nice. Mm. But like, for example, if I'm calling from a property yeah. uh, agency, then oh. you'd be like, Hey, no, 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 no. I don't want to shine buy away from those Exactly. People, so the 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 perception. The the stigma, the perception is very yeah. different, yeah. Okay, uh, ending off, ending off this, and or ending off on this podcast, right? Uh, I'll just ask you some very generic stuff, Sure. Uh, what are your favorite books? Do you? Re- I mean, are you a reader <laughs> in the first place, or not? Not so much, is it? You know, when I saw that question, I was like, oh no, is he gonna ask me this question? Um, I don't read as much. In fact, when I was growing up, I hated books. The only kind of books I read was textbook. Oh. Uh, but now I had to, you know, run my or own. Or at least, how, what is your primary medium of absorbing content? Is it like pod- audio podcast, or is there any podcast that you recommend for someone out there, or are you gonna give a right hook? They say, oh, listen to your podcast. <laughs> what's your podcast? Okay, okay. What's the podcast about? <laughs> okay, so my podcast is called the hashtag Try Everything. Oh. Um, so what we do here is to actually collect stories of people around mm. me and of course uh, we're happy to get guests who actually made mistakes failed and eventually found something they like to do because mm. what we realise in the entire scope of you know graduating uh, Singaporeans young Singaporeans under 30 under 35 that's yeah oh. that's me too oh. but like you know they get lost in their thoughts sometimes they get worried because they don't know what they can do and they don't dare to try so the whole point of this podcast was set up to actually mm. interview people who uh, failed and eventually found something that they like to do. Mm. Mm. Sharing and it, the process. Like. Exactly. And it's, it's really from the horse's mouth because they will share stories and you know the funny things or the sad things. Mm. They had to miss out certain opportunities. They had mm. to, for example, for mine, I had to go through a family thing to mm. realize that hey, I, need, I need to do something different. Yes. So podcasts, uh, it's, yeah, it's one of the mediums that I do. Um, mm. 
absorb content if you say that uh, I used to read more but now that I'm busy with client things I, I try to squeeze time but it's a bit difficult so in general in terms of the genre I actually read more towards like self-development kind mm. of books Gary V's books are quite good I like them um, in terms okay, of the point is uh, I work in Vietnamese right? what do you think of Gary Vaynerchuk? I think he's He's very real. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've seen him speak live actually. Oh, I the went to the event. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think he's very amazing. Year, uh, last year, last yeah. year, last year. Um, to my surprise, there were a lot of youngsters there. Yeah, I would think that were you there? A, no, I wasn't there. Uh, 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 yeah. uh, he was quite amazing, but of course, he's. I mean, I say that he's real because uh, he's the same on screen and off, off screen, like yeah. on stage. Mm. So, uh. For, for, let's say for people who don't know who Gary Vaynerchuk is in a few single sentences what does he do in, from your perspective because uh, it's different for me because I work in his company mm, mm, mm. I mean for me I, I read up on him a bit too much so I, <laughs> I know I know what he does uh. so I mean he runs you know he, run, he runs the digital marketing he runs the content management and stuff mm. but uh, for me I just see that he's uh, he's, a, he's a human being who's trying to make other human beings better mm. Mm. and I think that's what everybody should become mm. because why do you want to be toxic, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So that's my, my impression of him. And I feel like he's just somebody who's very real. And mm. even even when you read his books, right? Like mm. you can you can feel as though he's talking. You can hear his voice, <laughs> right? So yeah, yeah. sometimes I'm like, oh It's my very God. consistent. La. Yes, Even yes. a ghostwriter adapts to it. Correct, yeah. correct. Because correct. he doesn't def- uh, correct. Are there any other thought leaders you would say you did? Uh, Mel also- Robbins. Mel, Robin. Mel, Mel Robbins. Who's that? I uh, don't she's, know actually. She, she, I think she's in her 40s or 50s, I'm not okay. wrong, from the States. Um, mm. So what she does, she used to be a lawyer, if I'm not wrong. So mm. she has this five second rule, mm. five, four, three, two, one, and go do it. Oh yeah, I, I think her you probably, probably heard of it. So yeah. her five second rule is actually something that a lot of people use. I, I used to use it for a period of time mm. or so. Um, but the more... Um, one thing that I like to use about her is um, whether mm. you're a chicken or a jerk. She has this theory whether you're a chicken or a jerk. Chicken or a jerk? Yeah, okay. so, what, so what? She's, she's very onto not self-sabotaging. Okay. Mm. So for example, if you have a self-sabotaging thought, for example, today I can't come to JJ's podcast. Yeah. So uh, because uh, I don't want to speak on a podcast. Mm. So this thought, is it being a jerk or is it being a chicken to yourself? So I'm being a jerk to myself because I, I don't want to attend. I, I, if, if I'm scared of being on a, on a podcast, then yeah. I'm chickening on myself. So why be a chicken? So she wants you to be aware of why you're self-sabotaging yourself. So categorize your thoughts in either a chicken thought or a jerk thought. Jerk thought, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. That's yeah, interesting. so then when you realize that you're being a jerk, right, then you just unjerk yourself. Lah. Oh, and so then it forces, you to, so forces yourself to be self-aware. Then, correct, right? correct. Because oh. there are certain things where we know we need to do, oh. but we don't do it. For yeah. example, like going to waking yeah. up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Now, now that you yeah, like yeah. yeah so it's I, I, I like that theory a lot so yeah. there was a point of time when I was uh, I mean everybody has ups and downs right so there was a point of time when I was really hitting like the rock and I was yeah. thinking on what to do with this thing like yeah. I need to do this but I don't want to do it mm. so that I asked myself why do I want to do it then when the, the, the answer came out and then mm. I was like shit lah I'm just jerking myself so I just go and do it I think it's very practical okay, okay <laughs> I, I need to adapt this a very very yeah. nice thought very nice yeah, thought yeah. okay short five questions best advice you ever received Life is short, go do it. Worst advice you have ever received? Never mind lah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it took me a while to register that shit. One year from now, it was the best year of your life thus far. What events, what tangible events would need to happen to, what, what, what tangible events would need to happen this year to make it the best year of your life? Mm, finally making more than what I did last time mm. as a self-validation. Yes. And, um, I don't know buying a car tangible mm. right yeah mm. buying a car, buying a car. Yeah. okay uh lauren thanks so much for coming right for <laughs> listeners that are interested to reach out to you right where can they find you and reach out to you right uh i'm on instagram so my instagram handle uh do i read it out uh, yeah uh, okay at, uh, so uh, my instagram handle is a uh, very star wars related so it's ongbi one kenobi <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah and um i'm on facebook as well i guess how do you spell it uh ongbi o- like because my surname is ong o-n-g uh. so like, instead of obi one kenobi is ongbi one kenobi oh, okay yeah. that's cool that's cool <laughs> that's, a, that's a uni nickname that my friends used to give uh. me so i just thought i just use it lah uh, are you more active on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook? Um, I'm, I'm, in, I'm active, uh, active on Instagram mm. and LinkedIn, less mm. of Facebook. Mm. Um, and also you can you can take note of my podcast and you yes. let me know how, uh, <laughs> how they it are goes. available on all channels. Yeah, so podcast is available on uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Castbox, basically almost everywhere. Mm. So. Uh, 
Hashtag try everything. Hashtag try everything. Hashtag try everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Lauren, thanks so much for joining this podcast. I really learned a lot in terms of HR, and I think there's a lot of uh, breaking the misconceptions about HR, which I learned a lot today. And thanks so much for thank coming, you. man. Thanks so much. Thank for you coming. for having me. Thank you. Yay!